everyone says all this bad stuff about Papakura. Like when you tell someone that they're not worth anything, and they start to believe it. When I first came, I wasn't really a good boy back then. Yeah, you know, I just thought I was cool as. Assaulting other students, fighting, assaulting teachers. I think I was just trying to be someone that I wasn't. I didn't want to go to school, you know? Why would you want to go to school? Because I was horribly bullied, you know? It's kind of like I didn't have a place there. Like, wh why am I here? I'm not supposed to be here. The impact of poverty on the education of the young people here is quite significant. The, the most important thing for the kids here is that there are teachers who get up every day, come here and give them a sense of hope that education is going to be the lever that's going to actually give them a future and give them a life. that our school's gonna be shut down. See, I don't know why, because I think our school's great. Like, I know that we have fights and stuff, but that's all, like, you tell me the worst things about the school and I still wouldn't care, like, that'll just drive me to, like, change that. You can tell me this is school, but this is home for me. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've seen you in ages. Helen, I seen you yesterday. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. On my other zone, we're on the wrong side of the train tracks. It's supposed to be on that side, and the train tracks are literally right there. So it's like, it's not really fair, but yeah. So mum was like, had to say, you're gonna have to go to bed, grow high. I didn't have any friends. I didn't know anyone there. I didn't have a group to go to like I do now. And it was, it was tough, because I didn't have someone to go to and say, hey, this is happening to me, you know? And I couldn't do that because I was afraid, you know? When I first started, like, it was packed, packed, and then once, once my years, like, year 11 to 12 to 13, that's when basically um, all the opinions of the community, I think, uh, hit us hard, and then the students, or the student capacity started going down, and now, Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, just basically ghosts. You can yell and you'll probably hear yourself from echoing. Until approximately 12 months ago, the school was going to be completely rebuilt. The Ministry of Education decided that the plan to rebuild would not go ahead. There are sections of our school community who believe that that was really a signal that Papakura High School was going to close. The number of young people who leave the Papakura community every morning to go to be educated elsewhere is something that I find really disappointing. And in a sense, the Papakura community doesn't have the confidence that Papakura is a good place to be educated. Polyfest is a celebration of civic culture. They call it the female leader the Vahenga. Yeah, so it's real special to be given the vote. Um, I have a passion for kapaka. That's one of, that's one of my main things I love. 
It's like a reflection of myself. My own personal goal is just to try to lift Papakura High School up, their spirit, and to change the community's perception of what our school actually ain't. Yeah, everybody. Thank you. Everybody. Don't muck around. When you get there, you're in the zone. Don't go meet your friends and go, yeah, cheer bro, cheer bro. You're, they're your enemies until you finish that stage. You just need to switch on now. Haki roto. Haki waho. Wish you all the best. Marama. Oh. oh! I've always wanted to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Before I hopped on the stage, I was like crying, I don't know why, but I was really, really emotional. <laughs> Just, yeah, putting all my anger, the, uh, like the build up, the build up and all that, yeah, put all my anger on that stage and try to form it. It was just awesome. Just to uh, hop on that stage with all my group. <laughs> Friends, family, that's why I was a bit emotional because uh, my dad, he doesn't usually come to my stuff. But just seeing my brother, my sister, and my uncle from my family, that's really cool. And then, yeah, my friends and all the girls outside. Yeah, this is a bonus. <laughs> I think people make us feel like being Tongan or being Samoan is kind of mundane and like not really useful in the real world. <laughs> How diverse our school was was kind of like shrugged off, whereas Mr. Ross is kind of embracing it, and it's nice for us to see that because he's not poly. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. He's like, I don't know, he's, he's white. That's what he is. He's white, and we're poly, and we just, like, we're not used to people being so interested in our culture. I think most principals, they start off here and they go straight to like, um, like being strict and setting rules, but whereas Mr. Ross, like, he's trying to build relationships with us. I just wanted to share how much John really appreciates all the different um, cultures at our school. He really just absolutely t um, cares for the kids and supports them in everything that they want to do. I hope that you can understand a little bit of um, my tongue and, and thank you to uh, Ms. Vino for helping me uh, with uh, my speech. So, I knew that there were particular challenges in the South Auckland schools and I knew that there were some issues related to student achievement here. And so those things were issues that I found quite attractive in some ways in terms of the challenge of coming here and working in the school. He's cool, eh? To see him getting amongst the language, he just, he's, and he always comes to our rugby league games. <laughs> he's, he's a cool fella, cool chap. And I would like the school to congratulate you for that, for that wonderful performance you put on yesterday. Well done, Mr. Patrick. 60% of the students are of Māori origin. And when you add the 25% who are of Pacifica or of descent to that figure, you've got a very strong Polynesian flavour within the school. And it's very important that our Māori community really engages with our school because if our Māori students, our rangatahi, are engaged positively in class, then we know that the rest of the school will follow suit. We're not the richest family in the world, but my dad has always provided for us. I don't know any students who have like gone through that whole um, sleeping in garages or sleeping in your own car, um, but I do know that it is around Papa Grey just because mum and dad, we've, we've driven around just to like hand out food and stuff. So I do know it's a reality in our town. We also have, in the Papakura community, 
Um, a level of dysfunction, involves gangs, it involves domestic violence. But those deficit factors in themselves can't be used as an excuse for young people failing to achieve at school. Half of us. Half of us don't have money, so we come together. <laughs> and then it's nice and dry, and it's hot food, so we get to warm up before we have to go back to school. Oh, a little so restaurant, eh? <laughs> Our kids are so humble and they will never ask for a handout. You know, it's, it's shameful and those sorts of things. And so, in the long run, it affects us because if they're not in their uniform, they won't come to school if they don't have one. If they are hungry and those sorts of things, then, you know, you can say goodbye to the learning sometimes because the mind's elsewhere. Those who grow up in a situation of privilege find it very difficult to, to grasp where what, what our world looks like, but our kids grow up with a worldview that is so narrow and so limited, it's really quite scary. And so education has got to compensate for that. My friends say I'm loud, outgoing, eccentric, just over the top sometimes. <laughs> um, just, I'm very creative as well. I always, I always saw myself as like liking drama stuff, um, but when I actually got hands on with it, in class, that's when I was like, this is something that I want to do and I want to continue. That's what his teachers just couldn't even deal with his behaviour. But obviously he's a really smart, really talented kid, so, you know, we persevered. And I think he really found his path when he got into drama. For him, that was a really big change and he was able to channel all that energy into something really positive. I saw some kind of need to be there. It was kind of like therapy, in a way. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, birds, cats, dogs, birds, mice, and squirrels. Oh wait, not squirrels, those cheeky little fluffy tail critters are not a lot of my big tent. There's a small circle that, you know, really does see each other as a family, instead of just a class. We're definitely a family. We've been through a lot together. It's very open and safe, yeah. Like, I would be, you know, count into the minutes to get to drama. I'm, I'm not getting bullied anymore. I haven't been bullied for a while now, probably about three or four years. Like, when I said to the kids that are year nine, they, they have bully problems. They always have, they said they always have, and I always told them that I'm here if you need me to talk to you or whatever, you know? I feel like I'm more a supervisor now, looking over the people that I said I would help. As many of you know, Jaden and I spent a lot of time apart. Um, it was the hardest time in my life. My parents split up when I was young, and I went away with my dad. Then I went to my mum. Been shifting around a lot. I remember the day clearly, your mum told me that she was pregnant. I was on my lunch break at work, I was eating a ham and salad sandwich. I was only 19. You're a grown man now. It's time to make your life and enjoy it. Be the person you want to be. I love you, mate. And always will. People think that Pope Crew is just limited to Auckland. It's not. I'm going to do design. I'm going to practice my art and get better at what I want to do when I leave school and I'm constantly being given opportunities. I do obsess about the school. I dream a lot about the school. Often when I wake up in the morning, Papakura High School is the very first thought. I sit in bed with my espresso and I think about the day. <laughs> Thank you.
I was born and bred in Papakura. Um, I was born at um, Papakura Maternity Unit, or what everyone else says, under the bridge. For age uh, 14 to 16, I definitely wanted to join a gang, only because I was in a phase where I was surrounded by a lot of it. And yeah, they, they sort of influenced me to be like them. Like they'll hone me into like a tough guy. Everyone always thinks I'm the manly boy, but really inside I'm like a little teddy bear, a little koala, you know, cuddly ass. It was a fight after a party. I didn't get arrested, but I got taken out from the cops. My mum was breaking down. She said, don't be like my father, like go to jail and all that. Like she was just scared because that that's what my dad used to do. And yeah, that, that sort of encouraged me not to be part of gangs and all that, just because I saw my mum break down. How's it, bro? How about you go over? How about yeah. we just hold it now and you jump over? Ready? <laughs> if I was in a gang, I'd probably be on drugs, be selling drugs, be unemployed and... Yeah, something down that road. I really want to be like a sports person or a social worker or a PE teacher. Public good high school, it's, it's a place where you're safe. I think just being in the right class with the right teacher is a very good help. So the agenda was for you to share where you're at with your goals for this year and next year. If they changed, are you happy with your progress towards them? Got heaps of expectations. Um, I'm trying to set those expectations. History and English, yeah, my attendance is like 87%. They always used to be like 90-something, 90 99, but now, yeah, just... Just be stacking off, um, no relevant reasons. Um, just, yeah, home stuff. Getting distracted a lot. Seems like family stuff at home. Have to, like, do my chores and all that before I leave. And we'll just, we'll see, I'll just go in bed late and waking up the next morning late as. My goals, I have still setting the same goals. Want to do a conjoint um, degree in <coughs> uni, um, Bachelor of Sports and Rec and Bachelor of Business. Yeah, I have to, like, live up to my... Prefect um, role. All right. The thing that I look forward to the most is my interaction with the kids. How's it going, boys? Oh, good. Is your work? How many months have you been working on that one? Oh, just, just one. One month. One month. When I arrived at the beginning of the year, I sensed that there was an enormous amount of pessimism about the future of the school. Oh, very impressed with that. You did a good job there. I focus on the fact that I felt that the most important thing I needed to do this year is to give people a sense of hope. Oh, so you know exactly what you have yeah. to do. Oh, that's awesome. Very impressed. When money is a struggle at home, like obviously it's gonna make like teenagers once you're old enough to go out and get a job to help out. Like you want to pitch in at home because you, you like hate your situation kind of thing. For a lot of families in Papua, you're expected to mature faster, and so like all you're taught is being a mum or uh, going to get a job. My family <laughs> reads rugby. Yeah, I think that's how I kind of gained an interest in it. I've always played for Pepper Pro High. Like, I've never really had the time to go play for a club. Started playing when I was year nine, and um, I got to know heaps of people through my rugby, and um, I guess I got recognised as well through my rugby. In the start of the year, one of my goals was to make the county's team. And um, one of the guys came up to me after my game, and he's like, invited me to go to one of the trainings. So it was either work or county's training, and I kind of just like pushed that aside and just focused on work because my grandpa recently passed away last year. So we're just trying to hide out safe because um, all my family from like Australia and the South Island is going back to Tonga and have a reunion. And like, I just want to make sure our entire family is part of that. Like my parents have never asked that of me, but I just feel like that's the right thing to do. Like my family will always come first before like the needs of myself. Have a great night, guys. 
I'm not a first-time principal who's just having a go. There is a plan, and, and I, I, I'm very confident about what I'm doing. Too many young Māori have been leaving school with nothing. It can't be that young Māori are not intelligent. It can't be that they are not equal in terms of their brain power as non-Māori. It has to be factors within the education system that contribute to that sense of failure. And so that's why I've said that at Papakura High School, the most important thing is for Fano to walk through the gates of the school and to get a sense that this school values who they are. You voted that your queen for the 2016 Papakura High School Board is... Wendy Sabeti! I really want people to believe that our school's this amazing. Yeah, I just want it to carry on. I just don't want anyone to forget this place or and what we're capable of. It's been a big term, heaps of applications, had to sign up for. Yeah, currently of MIT and AUT, and still looking for some more. As a prefect, like, you have these expectations, and, yeah, I'm a bit below it, just a bit, but the teachers encourage me to just keep going, don't give up. I try to avoid a girlfriend the next minute. I don't really invite girls to my family. This one's really supportive. Like at the beginning of the year, I didn't really do anything for schoolwork. And then come closer to the end of the year, she was always on my case to get my studies, exams. Oh, she actually made me do my English exam this year. I told you I wasn't going, because I didn't study for it. But she just taught me some stuff in like one period, then I had an exam the next, the next hour, and then I did it, you know, with her. The scholarship that I applied for was the Māori Sports Award Scholarship. Yeah! Hold it, Robbie, hold it! It's an entry into the Monaco Institute of Technology, where I'll be studying um, Bachelor of Sport and Rec in Science. That's if I get the scholarship, but I just finished an interview. Um, it was a good interview. I'm very confident that I'll get it, but it's just a long, long wait. <laughs> if I didn't get the scholarship, I'd probably just work, support my dad, yeah, help him with the house, keep, I like, yeah. I just want him to keep it because he's worked so hard for it. I'm just going to talk about your marks and where you're at with your goals for next year. So, just remind me... What my goals are? Well, so you use social work, yeah? Um, would you consider moving away from home? No. <laughs> Fair enough, like, I didn't oh, either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like, I just don't want to go into campus, you know, I want to stay around here. Yeah, fair enough. So I'd suggest going to see Mrs Paulus and get some ideas of the specific courses. Check whether you've got the right subjects, Class, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I've been talking to our careers teacher quite often, like in and out of her office, even after school, um, to see like what scholarships are available. And I'm like heavily relying on scholarships. Like I don't want to bring the burden back to my parents or like apply for student loans. Um, I mean, I guess that's always an option, but for now, since I do have the opportunity to take hold of scholarships, then I might as well. Even like before, I decided to go to AU. I don't want to go to any universities at all. I'm like, take me away from home. I think just being at home would ground me better in university and you don't have to think about it full time. Like you come home and relax and then go back to school and deal with that. Jaden, first in drama. Jaden proceeds to stage five for excellence in drama. I miss the teachers the most, especially um, Mrs M. She taught me that I don't let anyone keep me down and I follow my passion. She had that connection with us that we actually would listen to her. It's going to have my name on it. 
There's no space for me there. What was that one for? Just be, um, switch up. Excellent and jump. I found a place to move out to. And my mum was very upset about it. She doesn't want me to leave the house, but she feels like it's, it's my decision. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. And I want to do it, so I'm going to do it. Yes, I could just go straight to university, but it'd be better for me to have more money behind myself. Because I don't want to be struggling while I'm studying and say like, hey, you know, I've got the hard yards now. I was like, well, let's make the hard yards a bit easier. And if that means I have to wait a whole year before I go to university, then that's fine, I'll do it. The recipient of the Pacific Island Cultural Club Trophy is Wendy Savietti. <laughs> Reflecting back on the start of the year, I remember I wanted like one award, and so I was just kind of looking forward to that, and I wasn't really expecting anything else. To win that, it, wasn't so much to be rewarded for like the roles that I've taken part in Karate. It was more so like to remind me that the, like, the world has enough thugs, like we need more leaders kind of thing. The recipient of the Judith Collins Cup for 2016 is Robert Shell. Try to stay humble. Eh? Everyone keep, keeps on looking at you and all the bored people on stage, they're just like, oh, I need a right. And yeah, just try to just smile, be proud of myself. So it was good um, doing alongside Wendy, because every time I got caught up, Wendy would always be next to me. And then y'all would always be like, yeah, we did it, we made it. So we're proud of each other. It's emotional. Like, you know, you've walked through those gates every morning and every afternoon with your friends. And kind of like the way I imagine it is just flashbacks of the entire five years I've been there. And it's like, it's impacting. I wanted to go to university to be like a social worker at, at the start of the year. Um, and it's because of like our social predicament at our school. Everyone labels our school as like at risk. And so I wanted to kind of help our students. Say you go to a school in central Auckland or something. You don't think about being a social worker because you don't have social issues in your area. I actually did the first out of all my siblings to go to university. That's a huge achievement. And my dad, he was better than dropping out. He said he didn't want, to, want me to do what he did. Mr. Ross, he's all about the kids. He just sees a bright future uh, where people can sustain a healthy education. And yeah, he just sees a lot of potential in the school. So why not think the same? I don't have to apologise for Papakura High School. There are certainly areas that we need to improve on. It feels like a sense in which Papakura isn't good enough, and yet I firmly believe Papakura is good enough, and I would love to see the people who live in Papakura back their own community as a good place to be. Take a look and 